we've been pretty good at at bouncing back from a game that we just really didn't think we played well. I'd like to eliminate that game we just didn't really play well, um, but full credit to the team for coming back on a back-to-back -back and not feeling very good about last night. Jim, in the past you said you kind of leaned into him sometimes and other times sort of taken you know, back seat. Yeah. What was the approach after last night's game heading into this? Oh, uh, well, we had to lean in a little. We had to challenge him because that was, uh, you know, Vegas is a great team playing as well as they had. And, uh, you know, just didn't feel good last night for lots of different reasons. And uh, we had to have a response, and we did. So, I, and, I, and I also thought we moved the puck pretty well. Like, we scored some nice goals. It just felt like, you know, through working, we were able to really move the puck, really make some nice passing plays, which we've struggled a little bit so far, frankly, this year. So it was good to see some guys moving the puck like that. Can you mention certain individuals? A lot of eyes were on Kevin Fiala after what's happened the last few games. Was that the kind of response you wanted from him individually? And what has your guys' communication been like these last few days? Yeah, I mean, it's been fine. Like, uh, you know, there's nothing malicious about what anything Kevin did. Kevin is a team guy. He wants the team to have success. Um, sometimes he has problems controlling his emotions and he can take penalties. You know, it's the, but it's nothing that he is doing purposefully. That I understand. And, and kind of a freak thing that, that happened with him in San Jose. So there's there's nothing there. He came back and he was a good teammate and he wanted to get out there and work. He did. You know, I was happy to see him rewarded with a couple points. Kepi and Kopitar are both very complimentary of Turk. Not only yeah. the speed, but the work ethic, etc. Mm -hmm. you, you tried him out last night for a little bit. What did you like about the three of them playing together today? Well, I thought that was probably their best game. Uh, uh, Juice and Kopi. I know Kopi had the three in uh, Buffalo. But as a line, I thought that was their best night, and I thought they were ready to play right away. You could see it. I mean, Kempe had two shots. I think the first couple shifts, dangerous as speed. But I thought Turk did exactly what we hoped he would do. He really complimented him. He buzzed. He drove through the middle on, on Kempe's goal and drew the defenseman. He forechecked. Uh, he was really good. He was exactly what they needed for tonight. Frank Clark and uh, Frank Clark and Alex is very. Uh, it's a long season. They'll probably have some bumps mm -hmm. somewhere. But how important has it been for for you guys to see them ascending mm -hmm. the way they have been, and particularly right now? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll lump all our younger players in with that because it is more than those two. I know they have some points. Um, it's been a real boost for us because our, our veteran players, our scorers, haven't got off to the start that they've wanted to. That's clear. And those guys have kind of held held it together for us as those guys start to get going, which I hope tonight is a springboard for that. Um, but you need to find some goals then somewhere, and and you know laugh with his uh, with his goal total. Clark, he's made some pretty good plays, um, you know, to get some points. And and we saw the one tonight. The, the thing about assists is sometimes you can get some ones that really don't have much of an effect on the play. Goals, you got to score the goal. Somebody's got to put it in the back of the net. So sometimes assists can be a little bit misleading, but. Um, you know, we've relied on both quite a bit for scoring this year. On the opposite end of moving Turk on up, you had Quinton back in yeah. center. What did you see out of his game today? I, I liked his game. I, I mean, we've talked about this a lot with everybody. Quinton is a center, even though he went back and he played the wing, and he might go back and play the wing at some other time again this year just because we need flexibility at different times. But he's a center. He's going to be a center for a long time. Um, and I think that's where he contributes most. And I think that's where he'll see the most, grow most growth as a player. It's also three straight games without a shot on goal for him. Is this still kind of the same measuring? Yeah. yeah. He was close. He missed just a couple in tight tonight. Yeah. I mean, that, that part of it, it's frustrating. I know him and Phil in particular. You know, you, you always want to score. Uh, I thought they played well despite wearing that because I know they want to get one so bad. And, and it affects you. It just does. But I thought they played a good 200-foot game despite that. So they'll, they'll score eventually. You said you need goals over assists, but Grant's got 11 points in 11 games, and we really haven't seen that type of production from the defenseman here. So how surprised are you at this point as a goal, a point of game player? Yeah, I mean, he's had a good start point-wise for sure. Uh, he's taken some risk that have helped him get those points. He's taken some risk that have cost us the other way that nobody – that don't, they don't go in the column quite as much, you know what I mean? So I'm just really careful with that. Um, you know, he's a good offensive player, there's no question. He just has to play a complete game. We're just not going to let him go racing up and down the ice and, and be a point of game player if that's what he ends up with. He's just got to play the game the right way and his points will come. But there's no doubt he's, he's done a good job. He's contributed offensively and, we, and we've needed that. Yeah. We can't let you go without uh, talking about Akil at least, but you know, he's moved.
moved to a different position tonight. Yep. Um, at least further down the lineup. Just thoughts on his game after being so complimentary of it. Yeah. Pre-game. No, good again. Yeah, really good again. Yeah. I, I mean, I like that line again too uh, with Louis and and uh, Gino. They those guys had chances. They moved the puck too. Um, no, Akil's been good. Yeah, he's really done a nice job. He's he's. It's almost like when he came up last year. That's what he looks like. He didn't look like that at the beginning of this year for whatever reasons. I, I don't know what it was. You, you would have to ask him. He didn't have the same pop in a step. He's got it back. Good for him. Was there any distraction at all with the World Series game? Oh, distraction. I thought the players were going to stop for a moment. It was, it was, oh, you guys were here. It was so loud. It was, was the oddest thing I've ever been part of on, on the rink there. It just really was odd. We were secondary, yeah. It was we were secondary at, at that moment. So, yeah, that was that was that was interesting. But good for the Dodgers, and congratulations to all the Dodgers fans out there. Did you mention Adrian's strong start? That felt like the most Adrian Kempe like game we've seen this season with the mm-hmm. speed, the shot mentality. That's it. I agree. Yeah. How important is it to get that game from consistently for this team? Yeah. Well, we need that. He's he's you know typically our our leading goal scorer year after year. I know Morsey got him last year, but. We need that, he need, and he needs that. And I, I think you, the key word you said was speed. I think we saw his speed tonight. There's been too many games where he hasn't, he hasn't been able to get the engine going for whatever reasons. Tonight we saw his speed, and um, you know we've talked about you know five or six shifts in, we can all feel are we ready to play? And you could see we're ready to play. But beyond that, he was ready to go. I think that really helped us out of the gate. How dangerous he was early. Glad that the. Uh during second intermission because I know Freeman's grand slam last Friday during the Lakers game was... Was it the same thing? No, well, was while action was going on. Yeah. The players didn't know what was happening. Is that right? Yeah, I thought it was similar today. Uh, You know what? I didn't look up, I have to tell you. I didn't didn't know what was... I assumed the Lakers or the Dodgers were doing pretty well, but I didn't give myself the chance to look up because it was... The play was going on. It was... uh, Yeah, it was a a challenge. Just thoughts on Kopitar originating? Well, I don't know what can be said maybe that hasn't been said already other than, you know, he's another year older, another, and he just keeps going. You know what I mean? So all the, all the great things that have been said about him over his career, but the fact that he's still able to be that impactful at that age is, is pretty incredible. Last season, Todd said he would forget what milestone Kobe was hitting. Were you even aware that there was another one coming, or is it just a nightly thing for you? Oh, I knew that, but we have one of the trainers uh, on the bench, you know, grabbed the puck and gave it to me to make sure I gave it to him. So there, our trainers are, are really on top of that, and, and Kobe's so humble. It's, it's just another one. I don't know how many of these milestone pucks he must have. He's probably got more than most, most minor hockey teams have for practice. Okay.